this is all lit up. Yeah, but it's not uh, changing anything. Morning guys, we'll get started here in just a second. Uh, my name is Jeremy, so good morning to all of you guys. I'll tell you guys a little bit more about me here in a second. But I would like to know while we're here hanging out, just by shouting out, I guess, what podcasts do you guys currently subscribe to and listen to? What's your favorite? Entrepreneurs on Fire. Entrepreneur on Fire, John Lee, okay. Soulpreneurs. Okay, Michael Michael O'Neill, right. correct? Okay, nice. You as well? Okay, cool. Um, show of hands, who here has a podcast currently? Cool. Who's here? Who here is um, interested in creating a podcast or something? Cool. Well, you guys are at here, regardless of this presentation, at a really cool point in time. If you're looking to make a podcast or looking to grow a community and stuff like that, so we'll go ahead and get started. If we have questions, if you have a comment, if an idea comes to mind or a blurb, whatever it may be, just feel free to shout it out, interrupt me. I get really excited about this stuff. I'm that person who, when I started a sport when I was little, or when I started skateboarding, or started watching a new show, or reading a new book, I had to tell everyone. And not because everyone should do what I'm doing, but because I wanted to share that feeling. And I wanted to help others find that same bliss that I had. And for me, one of those things is, hands down, creating an audience and being able to share my message and finding people that are like-minded that I can communicate with, that I can surround myself with, and that I can end up helping in some way. And what I've personally found is that podcasting, online content, videos, those things, that's the way to do it. So uh, we're gonna be talking about some of that stuff. Uh, yeah, so if you would like this slide deck, and I may update it if I do make any changes, just visit this link. I'm not asking for an email address. I'm not asking for a name. All I'm asking is to help you out. So if you're like me and some things go in one ear and then straight out of the other, then feel free to grab the slide deck for this presentation uh, during or after jeremymontoya.me slash techphxpodcast. Perfect. So this presentation on podcasting for a couple of different people. If you're not on here, let me know and we can address it. Um, but if you've never had a podcast before, if you're just listening to them and wanting to start creating them or wanting to see what that might look like, how that might work in your life or for your business, or if you don't have a business but you think it looks cool and fun, then definitely some, still, uh, some cool stuff in here. Um, if you've never uploaded a video to YouTube, maybe you watch a whole ton of them or you don't at all, you're gonna take away some cool stuff from here for uh, how you can definitely use some, some new technology. Um, if you are scared of the technology, which there are people of all ages, trust me, that are at this. I worked for Apple for four years and I saw the range. I saw the 102 year old person come in and buy their first computer and be really excited about it. And I also saw the 23, 24 year old come in and be scared of a laptop because they don't know how to use it. They'd never used a mouse before. So you're not alone if you are uh, scared of the, of the technology at any means. And if you don't know where to start, we're gonna cover some cool stuff and some starting around for you guys as well. Welcome, Sally. Um, so we're gonna discuss some things, like I said, um, how to build an audience and how that can impact your brand and or your business, how that can spark a community the methods and mindset that you should consider as you're brainstorming what your podcast might sound like or you're brainstorming where you want your production to be and the quality. We're gonna talk about some of those things here as well. I'm gonna show you some case studies for some podcasts that I've heard are popular, a couple that I like, and some different models. 
If your business doesn't fall into one of the three categories I'll be showing, then stop me at that point. I'll give you a chance and maybe we can brainstorm together what a podcast might look like for your business or we can touch on that in the end. We're definitely going to go over some getting started stuff and uh, we're going to talk about the platforms. Um, if you were in the last session in this room, raise your hand. So we talked about, we had someone great here, Evo, he's kind of the grandfather of podcasting, <laughs> all right? The grandfather, the godfather, the grandmaster, call it what you want. And we talked about, you know, is podcasting a disruption? And we compared it to a ton of different industries and movements going on. We kind of circle back to the idea that the disruption had, had already happened. And although it may not follow the checklist that he had up here for it being a disruption, if there's one or two things that it does disrupt, believe you me, especially being on the side of not having a podcast yet, the one thing it will disrupt is your life. Yes. It will disrupt your life, and if that passion lights a fire inside of you, then that, that will disrupt so many people in your community. And that's where the fun really starts to begin. So we're going to over some, go over some cool stuff. Like I said, if you have a question, just feel free to uh, pop your head up. Again, my name is Jeremy Montoya. I am a podcaster myself. I absolutely love Teslas. I got to test drive one when I was in Colorado last week. It was absolutely life-changing. I got a really cool jacket to go along with it. Um, there's a few things that I do love in this world. One of them is smoothies. If you ever want to chat anything, if it's podcasting or whatever it is, we can grab a smoothie or some Chipotle. I'll be a very happy camper and uh, we can talk about some cool stuff. Uh, I've been podcasting since, or wanting to podcast since this time last year. And I spent a hell of a lot of time trying to figure out the technology, trying to figure out what I wanted to talk about and do all those things. Um, but I'm doing it now and I'm having a ton of fun with it as well. And I am what you would call, it's a bad lit picture, um, a bedroom podcaster and video creator. I started doing the podcasting first and uh, now I'm experimenting with YouTube. So that's my microphone, that's my desk, that's probably the same water bottle I have right here. Uh, it's probably nasty, there's my breakfast, but yes. And here's the great thing about podcasting when we talk, yes? Can you define podcasting for me? Absolutely. So it doesn't have anything to do with audio or spoken track. Okay. The idea, the patent, and the technology is the ability to send a digital file to somebody episodically. How you can deliver in, in one small bit, it could be a PDF file. Here's okay. episode one, and then here's episode two. Okay. So it's just the means of, of connecting with them. Podcasting is a word that confuses a lot of us because we feel so technical with so it, right? doesn't mean YouTube videos. Not at all. Not by any means, but it could. It absolutely okay, could so if that's it your be, method. It could be PDF. Could be an audio file. Could be an MP3. Or, or video. Insert file or name three, here. Something that you're, a show that you're, or an educational process. Something you can subscribe to. Something you can subscribe to. Okay. Yep. And, and audio and video just happen to be the uh, most widely used form of it and the most accepted by the masses, uh, you know, generally because of its ease of consuming. Uh, so, yes, that's my bedroom. And it. <laughs> If the tech does scare you, or if you are wanting to start a podcast, it is pretty simple. It is so easy, in fact, that you could do it in your underwear. So all throughout the presentation, if you think something cool, if something comes out of my mouth or a blurb, be sure to use the hashtag TechPhoenix. There's my Twitter handle, at JV Montoya, and we can keep the conversation going and lively while we're all here at the conference together. It's podcasting tough. It can absolutely be. But you saw that I was in my bedroom, and yes, I do podcast in my underwear. We'll talk about that here in a second. So my first show, it was called Final Clock Out. I did it with a partner with a great friend of mine. It has come to a wrap now. Um, that This is where I started last year. Started finding out how to podcast, how to make an, on, an audience. I started from zero. No online audience, no list, none of those things, and building that from scratch. Um, I started experimenting and doing my own thing. I was posting videos as a part of a video challenge to YouTube with my buddy. I'll circle back to why that's relevant. And I ended up coming up with a show called This Is Life. But these two, my first takes at having a podcast and being in iTunes have come to a wrap because I've just been experimenting. And the show that I'm focused on now, or one of the two shows, the first is called The Montoya Experiment. I want it to be an extension of me and my personal brand. Not necessarily being a part of one niche, not necessarily talking about only entrepreneurship or only marketing or only social media or the things that interest me, whether it's a 49ers, a Tesla, or a strawberry smoothie. I want it to be a part of my personal brand. 
And then these, this show launched this week. It's called Magic Hour. I'm using podcasting. We talked about it towards the end, if you guys are trickling in, using the technology in a cool, interesting way that someone hasn't done it yet. I don't know if people have done this yet, but I'm using it as accountability because I'm waking up at 5 a.m. every morning. And I'm doing this for me. I get up and I talk for three minutes or I'll talk for 12 minutes. That's how the, the last few episodes have been. And who knows where it'll go. And my challenge is to help other people question what time they wake up and how much they're getting done and how much they're doing with their experience that we have here in this life. So those are the two shows that I'm focused on now. The things I did before and before then is what allowed for me to get to this point. It's all about trial and error. It's all about experimenting and figuring out what it's gonna be for you. And if you're anything like me, your first try at podcasting probably won't be the end all, be all. But you gotta start somewhere. So this is my testament. Business owners, if you're looking to make a podcast or if you're looking to take a podcast and make it into a business. Creating a video show, podcast, audio show, or a combination of the two is one of the fastest ways to stand out, build your credibility, as well as reach or create your target audience. Now, a lot of us go after niches as we create all of our businesses, but imagine creating one in your own because it's around your personal, your personal brand or your own personal business or your own idea, and you can begin to attract those same people too. They may not have a label on them yet, and you can be a part of that movement that allows for that label to be created. So these don't show up too well in here with the lights on, but the method that you end up choosing, um, you know, we talked about what is, what is podcasting. The method that you end up choosing, the platform that you end on, whether that's iTunes or YouTube, it's not that important. It's not as nearly as important as what you end up bringing to the world, what you end up talking to your community about, and uh, what you end up focusing on. So here are the big players, at least in, in the presentation that I'll be talking about here. Do you have a question, brother? Yeah, I was going to ask, with these, all these different media outlets, there is something that will publish to all of them, or no? Um, kind of, yes. So I'll give you an idea of how I do it. I'll post a video on YouTube of whatever length, of whatever production quality, and I'm building, in addition to YouTube and my iTunes community, I want a community over on SoundCloud. We were talking about that a little bit. You asked how, how good is SoundCloud. It's great so far. You can build a community there, and you can interact. I can make a video on YouTube and I can use a free service, whether that's Final Cut and exporting the audio, or I can use something like Outlisten and it will export just the audio as well as the notes and the name and the description of my video and it will take it right over to SoundCloud. If you check out my SoundCloud, you will see the difference between what an audio only show sounds like and the, and the quality of the audio versus just taking the audio off of the video. You do lose some there. But, and, and we'll talk about this throughout, this one is Stitcher Radio, it's another podcast app. I'm going to cover in depth pros and cons and what some people like to consider and stuff like that a little bit towards the later part of this presentation, but uh, nothing nearly as important as the passion you put into what you create, um, whether you know about the subject or not. Any questions on some of the platforms, at least right now, or any curiosities? What's this one down here in the corner? This one is called Stitcher Radio. It's Stitcher. like an online radio station for podcasts and for spoken word. So I ran across this this morning, and this topic has gone on the web for like three or four years now. That 2012, that 2013, that 2014, that 2015 is the year of the podcast. That it's finally having the resurgence that it's deserved. It's finally back. I don't see how it ever went away. I think some of these things are clickbait. But what's awesome nonetheless in the idea that any publicity is good publicity is that the word podcasts and these audio tracks are being exposed to more and more people. The technology is getting easier. It's becoming more accessible to the masses, whether you're two years old or like I said, 102 years old, there it's, it's never been easier. So there's a lot of talk about the renaissance of podcasting. There's a lot of talk about those things. There's a lot of podcasts in the world, just like anything else great, right? There's a lot of people making podcasts. Um, how to stand out, how to be unique, how to make something of it is truly, is truly the defining factor. If the last year we heard over and over and over that 2014 was the year of the niche podcast. It was the year of taking that one subject, that one core individual, and making them yours. And if 2014 was the year of the niche podcast, 
my personal my personal vision is that 2015 is a year of the passion podcast. The year people come out of their garage, they come out of their bedroom, and they come start talking about what interests them. They may not have music, they may not have a show laid out, but they'll get to that point because they're gonna end up attracting more Jeremy's to them or more Sid's to them. They're gonna attracting their cult and their tribe, putting a name to it, and they're gonna be able to create it around their personal interests and their brands. I guess we'll all stay tuned and see if that does come true. So like I said, the method doesn't really matter because I can make a video and I can take just the audio, the spoken track from it, and I can use that as a podcast, quote unquote. Or I can record an audio podcast if I really wanted to, and I could take the album artwork, you know, the CD cover, and I can put that as the video in it, and I can upload it to YouTube, and maybe some people will end up getting some additional exposure to it. But you can leverage both types. What really matters at the end of the day is what's easiest or what's best for you. Something to consider. If this says, where is your audience? But a better way to phrase that, thinking aloud, is where are you? Where are your eyes? Where is your attention throughout the day? You know, where are the places you spend most time or where you have most time? For some people, it's driving. And they listen to a podcast on their way to work. For some of those same people, it's still driving, but it's recording a podcast on their way to work. Because they can put their iPhone in their pocket upside down and they can talk. Whether they're just talking to their family, their extended family, or to the world, you can now broadcast that easily for very, very, very low bar of entry. So these are just some questions and thinking about the methods and thinking about the mindset. Don't get caught up in the technology. Don't even get caught up in, uh, and we're gonna cover more of this, the logo, the artwork, what, what it's gonna be about. Um, it's all about the mindset that you go in with. The most important thing in, in, in getting a podcast up and going, and probably the hardest, it was the hardest for me personally, and that was starting. I thought I had to do hours and hours of research. I signed up for communities, I signed up for paid products and courses, I signed up for blogs, for email lists, I signed up for, to listen to podcasts, to figure out how to make a podcast, and it stifled my ability. I sat around then for three or four months trying to think of how I was gonna make my podcast and my productions sound like all of the people I was listening to when they were doing it for years. Some of them started out just as good as you know, kind of they were at or they had a good starting point, but some of them, when you went back and listened to episode one, they just started. And being on the other side now of four podcasts in iTunes, I can tell you that the only important thing is starting, getting yourself in front of a camera, getting a microphone or a smartphone and recording. Once you get started, you can figure out what your show is gonna be. Like I said, the chances of hitting gold on your first stab at making a podcast, they're very slim. So why not throw yourself into trying something out and seeing if it's for you versus sitting back and waiting? Like I said, low bar of entry has never been more simple. What does matter is going to the best place for you and for your message. See, you may find that you love SoundCloud, but that's not where your audience is, right? Like they're over in Stitcher for whatever god awful reason, right? But like we have to figure out those things and we have to cater to it. And we're circling back to the idea of where should I put my stuff? Should it be on YouTube? Should I be in iTunes? You wanna be in the place that benefits you the most. And that's where we're gonna talk a little bit about leverage. See, what's awesome about social media is it lets the average person have the chance at being famous overnight. You get retweeted by a celebrity. It's the equivalent of being on Johnny Carson back in the day, right? Those people became instant celebrities because that was one of the three or four channels they had at the time, and that was the only show that was on at that prime time spot. So what's cool is it's leveled the playing field, right? NPR can have a top-ranked podcast in iTunes, but so can someone in their underwear podcasting at 5 a.m. every morning. There are places that don't have this built in. This, for me, is the most important. That's why I go and I write blog posts on Medium. That's why I'm on Twitter. That's why Instagram takes up more of my time than I like, because there's no way for people to repost, to reshare, to do any of those things. Find a place that gives you the best leverage for your audience, the best chance at being found, the best chance at being noticed. That's where you want to put all of your energy. That's where you want to focus your attention on at least the most, and definitely when you're starting.
So we, we shouted out some podcasts at the beginning, John Lee Dumas with Entrepreneur on Fire, Solopreneur Hour. What other podcasts come to mind or podcasters come to mind? I listen to all the comedy. A lot of comedy? What's your favorite? Uh, Kevin Smith or Ernest. Okay, I just found Bill Burr morning, Monday mornings. I, like I, thought, I, thought, I, was, I thought that was kind of funny as well. Doug Benson. Doug Benson, okay. What else? Anyone here listening to like any talk radio like NPR's or Dave Ramsey's, anything like that? This They're all doing it. What was it? This American Life. This American Life. I've heard about that one. I haven't checked that one out myself. A lot of good stuff on there. If you're a fan of a TV show, if you're a fan of a sports team, if you're a fan of a technology, if you like business, if you like people, if you don't like people, there's probably a podcast for you. If not, there's a great starting ground, right? So there's a lot of people already doing it. Uh, one of the more famous people podcasting is Joe Rogan. Um, he does video and audio, but he does it live. So there's some interaction with the crowd. It's cool because he has a guest right there in front of him. He is famous. He does UFC and all those things. So he's able to leverage his existing audience his existing stand-up content. Anything in Netflix is a commercial for Joe Rogan if it's Joe Rogan's name on it. And inadvertently, you're gonna end up thinking about his podcast. Or when you do go into iTunes for the first time and check out the homepage in the iTunes store for podcasting, you're gonna see his face because he's one of the most downloaded people out there. He gets leverage because of it. But so can the average person. His business model, at least for the Joe Rogan experience, is sponsorships. You'll hear sponsorships all throughout it, whether it's something like Nature's Box or a website host or, or some product that he's endorsing, some sort of supplement. That's how he um, makes money from the time he spends in front of the microphone. Probably money that he doesn't need, but he has those dollars trickling in, probably through YouTube because a video goes up on there, probably by people coming to his site and listening to it on his website because he'll have ads on there as well. You can see how having a podcast can bring more and more lights to the brand you already have or just propel the business and the stuff that you're already talking about. Um, a shining example, regardless of the content and the things he chats about, uh, a great example of how podcasting can look. Does anyone follow Savvy Sexy Social on YouTube? Cool, so if you're into marketing, or if you like social media, and any of that stuff interests you, you're really gonna like Amy. Amy schmidt -Tower has a ton of content she does online. She helps people get their blog set up. She helps people understand um, social media. She talks all about the latest trends going on in online marketing. And uh, she's a YouTuber before anything else, or at least that's where she's made the biggest name for herself. Um, she does pre-recorded video and audio. And when I say pre-recorded, she'll set up the camera do the video, edit it, and upload it whenever the heck she wants to YouTube. Now, she has some frequency in her show, which is kind of cool, because you can have a podcast that comes out when it's done, or you can have a podcast that comes out every Monday at noon, or every Monday, or every Monday and Tuesday, whatever it may be. Um, she does it pre-recorded, so she could knock out 20 videos and podcasts if she had the time and wanted to, and go on a hiatus for a couple months and have those queued up or have an assistant post those up, uh, however that looks. Her shows are short, they're quick, they're witty, they're very her, you have to check her out, but they're super informational. She's one of those people that understands that humans, unfortunately, at least Americans, we need to be entertained before we can be properly educated. She gets that, builds it right in. She also is extremely native, meaning she doesn't take her YouTube videos and take the audio and go and post them in the podcasts in iTunes. She doesn't. She, she builds her community on YouTube, gets subscribers, gets people to comment, gets people to share, and that's where she does her videos. But on top of that, she is native to podcasting because she has an audio-only podcast. So she gets the mindset of each platform. There are video podcasts in iTunes, but not a lot of people watch them. They keep saying that, I heard 2014 and 2015 were the year of the video podcast, and it is still the wild, wild west. You, there are better places for it, right? We spend more time on YouTube. There's stats that you can go and check. When people want a podcast, they're doing the dishes. They're in the car, they're at work hiding from the boss in the cubicle, whatever it may be. Um, so native, being native, playing to where you're gonna fit best and playing to that as much as you can, that's what she does. Leverage, she's staying on social media because she knows it. I don't know if she's famous, so to say, but she leverages it, does it the right way. And she has a very niche topic, marketing. Um, her show follows the name of her channel, Savvy Sexy Social. Savvy is Monday, Sexy is I think Tuesday, and then Social is Thursday or Friday. So she has some frequency in the stuff that she produces online. 
her podcast comes out when it's done. There could be two in a day or there could be one every other week. And her business model is consulting as well as some ad revenue from YouTube and some you know sponsorships and things like that. But she gets big clients because they find her on YouTube talking about marketing and these businesses and big corporations want her advice. She knows what she's doing, she's credible, she has content, she has an audience, so they begin to trust her. The same can happen for you in your niche, in your business, or in your industry. Now, like I said, I wanted to cover a couple different types of podcasts so you can see the realm. Uh, this is the third and last one. If I don't have anything in here and you're curious for how podcasting can work, feel free to raise your hand and shout out what kind of business you have, or let's definitely chat afterwards. And like I said, maybe we can find something cool that you can do with podcasting. This show is called Conversion Cast. It's from a company called Lead Pages. It's a marketing software online company. In this show, they bring on an interview every single episode or they show a case study or they can prove through the metrics, the analytics, and step-by-step -step processes how these companies achieved a higher conversion rate, conversion cast, haha, -ha, how to get more emails, how to get more people to their website, getting more people to their social media, but it's short, it's to the point, it's easy for the marketer to listen to like on the morning work and have some ideas for how they may implement that stuff in their project. And what's really cool, I'll get into it in a second, it's brief, it's action-packed, interview, audio only. You won't find it over in iTunes. They play to just the audio being in iTunes. Um, they leverage their existing audience and their product. Lead Pages has a huge list of customers and people that are interested in their product. So they're able to put a little icon on their website that says, listen to our show. They're able to send out to those people every now and again to remind them or to show them that a cool person is on the show or a case study they need to see. And then this takes them back to the website because they'll talk about a webinar they're having that's coming up. Text your name and number to this and we will, and you'll, sign, you'll be signed up for the webinar. And just like that, boom, now they're bringing people from the show that has amazing content and a great quality production and they're bringing people over who want to implement this stuff into their software that can help them with the problems they may experience along the way. Their business model, in the words that I, I kind of put together, is proximity and list building. Proximity because they are in the industry of converting. They are in the industry of helping businesses get into a better spot for a relationship with their customer. And list building because they do something pretty genius that you guys are going to, are going to start hearing more and more. You're going to listen to a show and they're going to have a call to action. If you want to see what we're talking about, if you want, to, if you want a checklist on what you're hearing today, or if you want a picture of the room that I'm podcasting from, you go to conversioncast.com slash bedroom podcaster and maybe there's an image there that it sends you or a checklist on what the topic of the episode was or some food for thought notes a transcription whatever it is and you give them your name and your email for it and now they're continuing to build their list they're continuing to build their list for the podcast to build their relationship and uh, maybe change some lives through their software it can be very very powerful this is going to become very popular in podcasts very quick if you're not hearing it already any questions on those so far or anything kind of tip in your mind that anybody wanted to talk about or pull apart for a quick second? Cool, we're going to talk about getting started. It's where the, uh, the fun begins. Now, not everyone can do this, but if you can, if you can talk, then you can podcast. Something for you guys to, to tweet out if you guys haven't already. But like I said, starting is tough. It's the hardest part of anything, getting that ball rolling, getting that momentum, developing the behaviors and the habits, right? Those 21 days that we've all studied and tried to kick coffee or whatever it may be. Mine right now, like I said, is waking up early and I'm using a podcast for public accountability, whatever it might be. We get stuck on some of the big questions. What do I name my show? What's my show gonna be on? What's my logo gonna look like? I need a logo. My friend's a designer, he's gonna design me a logo. The technology, what should I use? I don't know where to get a mic. Do I go to Amazon? Do I, do I sign up for someone's paid course to learn what microphone I need to get? What do I do? Tons of things come to mind. Like I said, I got started this time last year. My first show went live April 1st. And the joke was on me, because it's wrapped up now, right? So the list goes on. There are so many things that do make it tough. And for a lot of us, when we think podcasting or broadcasting or internet radio or audio on demand, this is sometimes a picture that comes to mind, if you can see it. It's just a mess. 
equipment everywhere. I need an amp. I need uh, a mixer. I need mics. I need wind socks. I need all of these things. But the truth is that you don't. This just makes it complicated. And with all of the shows I've personally been a part of and done, my setup has never looked anything like this. It's a clear empty table. It looks something like a laptop and a USB microphone or a phone or a small voice recorder. It's very simple. It doesn't have to be complicated or expensive. This costs a lot of money and people jump head in first here instead of trying things out and seeing if it's for them. So if you want to go the method of trying things out and experimenting, then uh, you're in the right place. Who in here has an iPhone? Who in here has a smartphone? Okay, it's debatable. All right, <laughs> it's debatable. Yeah. But this is all it takes. The way Amy does it, or the way I do some of my stuff, I can record a video on my phone, whether it's with the front camera or the better back camera, but I can't see myself. I can make a video. I can edit it all on here. I can go to iMovie. There's there's other movie editors. And I can put that on a computer. I can take the audio off. I can put it to YouTube right away and send it over to SoundCloud. Boom! Just like that. My content is now out there in the World Wide Web, in the digital matrix. So it doesn't have to be as complicated as it might look or as some others might make it as they teach us to do podcasting or they teach us to uh, get those going. So how complicated is the editing process? It's as complicated as how many times you thought you messed up or said something you shouldn't have on your track. So I, like I said, I started another podcast this last week to do some public accountability to try to wake up earlier, 5 a.m., I want to do it. I want to show others they can do it too. I literally roll out of bed and I start podcasting. In the first three shows, I didn't edit a single thing because there was nothing to be edited. I was groggy. I was knocking stuff over. You can hear it, and I like I talk about it in there. I was I didn't have food in my stomach. I'm worthless without food. It can be as as easy as that. I edited out one thing out of out of yesterday's show, and it was a call to action. I just didn't feel like it. there's no need to call that one. How many people are listening just yet? I'm not promoting it. I'm not some big celebrity. I'm not out there, you know, running Facebook ads to it and stuff like that. I'm just doing something for me I'm, that might evolve into something for others. I took that little part out because I don't want it to be filled with, hey, go subscribe or go do this or go do that. I say that here and there, but I, I thought it was too much. So I cut 15 seconds out and took it from 15 minutes, 45 seconds to, you know, 15, 30 or whatever it was. So it can be literally as, as much as you're comfortable in what you said. There are times where something comes out of your mouth when you're in that moment that you just didn't feel right, and so you mess up intentionally, so now you have to go and edit it. Sometimes you keep rolling, and you have to go and find that spot and take it out. But if you're comfortable with what you say, and, and you're confident with it 100%, you can hit publish, and, and just like that, you can go from phone to so podcast. You don't, have to edit. you don't have to edit a thing. What are some things you've done with video to save time? And that's a tough one because it, it takes me a lot more preparation. I'll, I'll start measuring it in like five hours in editing time for like a 12 minute video. So I showed four of the shows I had in the past. One of them was This Is Life. I wanted it to, to be very impactful in the terms of how to build a brand, build a business, marketing, all the stuff that all the other podcasts are currently doing. One of the reasons why I stopped it. And so I was preparing bullet points. I was preparing things to go and download after all that and it took up a lot of time. I could have started much simpler. Right, and done, done something much easier with the Montoya experiment, the show that that kind of evolved into. It's an intro, an interview in the middle, I record on Google Hangouts, and then me on the outro and some calls to action. So it's definitely easier like in that workflow, but it could be more simple. If you're good in front of the camera and you, and you get it right then and there, I'm not one of those people. I, I, I like being in front of the camera, but it can definitely take that down. Leverage, that, that kind of like the key word of this presentation, I guess. I have a buddy who edits video. And so he helps me out with some of that stuff too. So you know, having people close to you in your, in your circle that, that might do those things or finding someone that can cheaply do that, you can buy yourself some time, which is really the coolest thing that you can do. Yeah, because the rendering process is uh, a long take sometimes. It can be tough, for sure. And depending on the kind of computer that you're on, it can add a, a heck of a lot to that as well. So if you are looking to get started with a podcast, do start with your phone. You can always tweak, you can always take a different fork in the road, you can always pivot just a little bit to get to where you want to be. Whether that's quality wise or content wise, you can always buy a better mic, you can always buy a better amp, you can buy a better studio if you wanted to. At the end of the day, it's the content and that passion that you bring that matters. 
I can't stress enough how low the entry point is. Looking back now, had I been told this this time last year, I don't know if that would have affected me any. Until I went through the trials and tribulations of figuring it out, this might, this might have made me raise my eyebrows or it may have just bounced right off of me. Um, but it can be simple. It's as simple as trying something out, whether you end up sending it out to the world or not. You can experiment with podcasting very simply. I have a graphic designer, he's gonna make me a logo. Like how many times do we say, hey, I'm starting a new business, check out my logo. Well, tell me about your freaking business before you tell me about your logo. We get so caught up in the visual things, right? In the shirt we're gonna, the hat, all of that. It's very front, very material. And that's how it is for album artwork as well. There are so many ways to do it. And if leverage is, is part of this presentation, then the other thing I need to say and have be prominent is simplicity. Keep it simple. You can change the artwork. You're gonna change it 10 times the first week, believe you me. There are many places you can make some quick podcast artwork. The Magic Hour and the Montoya Experiment, we made those in Canva in five minutes. I had my graphic designer friend right next to me and he was in a program that anybody can use. The a online and it's free 100% unless you use one of their cheap stock images. Um, Canva can do it. If you, if you don't wanna mess with it and, and you want leverage, you know that you wanna buy some time, you can hit up someone like 99designs or Fiverr. You can say, here's what I want, here's what I'm looking for. Here's 10 podcast uh, album artworks that I love, make mine, you know, pitch me some. The designer's doing that. Five or five bucks typically, and you can get something. Or just a, a photo, like something to start. So it's not just like the, looks like the Facebook guy when no photo there, right? Like they know you're absent. Um, it can be very simple with, uh, with just an easy photo. So we're gonna talk a little bit now about the different places that you can have your audio show or you can have your video show or your combination. And one of the first that comes to mind, coincidentally for the word pod, hands down, is iTunes. They're one of the biggest places, probably the biggest places that you can consume podcasts, whether they are audio or video currently. And they have this system down pretty well. Over one billion plus subscriptions, that's last year. So think about where that is now. There's hundreds of thousands of podcasts being uploaded, I'm sure, every day now. People everywhere are coming out of the woodwork to make a podcast. Now the magical thing about iTunes, when you think leverage, and when you think of how little of the world knows what a podcast is, let alone the word podcast, how many people here in the last year heard the word podcast or found out what a podcast was? Interesting. So we have some people who have understood it, maybe more tech related, that's why. But uh, something cool that Apple most recently did, when you buy an iPhone, whether it's the old 5C or S or a new iPhone 6, there's a little purple app that comes on there by default that you can't remove, you can only kind of hide it and hope you forget about it, called Podcasts. Millions, 800 million people woke up one morning after their phone, way more than that actually, when their phone updated automatically or when they updated to the latest software in the last few months, and they woke up to a new app on their phone that they couldn't remove, and it was called Podcasts. So seven out of 10 Americans in the last year had never heard what a podcast is, was, or what it could be. They have now been exposed to that word. Think about the curiosity that happens on something so intimate as the thing you wake up to in the morning, the thing you go to sleep to. You're gonna tap it, right? You're gonna go to it, you're gonna figure some stuff out. You're gonna see Joe Rogan real big because it's popular. And you're gonna see NPR, This American Life, all those big shows you're gonna see on there. And then maybe you're gonna explore and find some stuff and, and maybe have the idea to make your own. A downside to iTunes, just like everything else Apple, they tell you zero of anything that goes on behind the closed door. I don't know from my podcast, how many subscribers, how many listens, how many downloads, where these freaking people are. Are they just Facebook scamming me like they do with likes? Are they just sending this out overseas and having people to, I don't know what it is. There's no stats, there are ways to get them. Um, you just, you can't see into the dark, dark hole that is Apple or iTunes. You can try, nothing there. Uh, but something else cool that's happening is CarPlay. Our cars are now becoming connected, as will our refrigerators and our, I hope to go extinct soon, microwave, maybe our toaster ovens. They're all connected these days, they're all talking. And you can now buy a car that has an internet connection built right in, like a Tesla does, <laughs> and you can listen to a show just by tapping. It's right there in your face. If you bought a new car and you're exploring the features, what are you gonna do? Especially when you see something foreign to you. You're gonna tap it, you're gonna go to it and maybe somebody will be listening to you on their drive to work or on their morning jog or uh, on their lunch break, whatever it might be. 
This one's YouTube, even though it's pretty dark. Um, we all here know YouTube, right? We all spend hours on YouTube ourselves. We know people who do. My parents and my grandparents use YouTube. That's freaking nuts. Um, it's kind of cool. You can make money on YouTube. You can't with just submitting to iTunes. You can make money on, on YouTube by getting views if, if you have something that people love. Um, there's over 100 hours per minute uploaded, so it's just nuts. You can see there are people there, tons of people consuming and watching it. They have amazing stats and analytics because they're owned by the biggest SEO company or engine, search engine company in the world, which is Google. It was a genius acquisition, and in that process, um, they have brought over some really cool things that Google does for us on our websites and our stats and our webmaster tools, and they brought them over to video. So if you did a video that was on some new vans that you bought, and people were searching for vans and they, they typed in the phrase you had or something you said or an item in your description or whatever the title of your video was, people can organically come and find your video. iTunes is a search engine as well, not nearly as powerful as what Google is. They don't know as nearly as much as Google knows about you in a portfolio that has your name, that has your photo, has everything personal about you, whether it was from Google or not, um, but it is very powerful nonetheless. This is my latest obsession, so I was really pumped to hear you talking about it, Sid. SoundCloud is one of the new players in podcasting, and they're doing a, a pretty cool uh, job of it. Some things that are cool, just like YouTube or Facebook, they're a social media platform, so it gives you a place people can come and follow, they can come and engage with you, um, you can comment back, you can just hang out with people. They have a really cool embeddable player, so if you have an existing website, you don't have to download a plugin, you don't have to do anything. If your track is in SoundCloud, you just copy a little piece of code and throw it on your WordPress site or on your, on your website, and it has a really cool way of displaying your podcast, showing how to play it and do all those things. You can even feature other people's. Uh, integrations and engagement, like I said, the, the fact that you can not only get your stuff to other people, but that you can communicate with them or engage with them in a small way, it's very, very powerful. SoundCloud's main focus, however, is it's audio streaming and with an emphasis on music streaming. So they're not the podcast company. And I always get weary of people and other businesses and corporations coming in and trying to rule these little small, small niches because they have their own agenda. They have their own thing they're going at. There's no revenue model. I don't know how they're making money off it besides if you go pro and you, you pay a couple dollars. Um, so it always makes, it, makes me a little wary. Um, and you don't own it. If SoundCloud stopped their podcasting beta program, which is still in beta, they could just wipe you out. If someone bought SoundCloud and just to shut them down, your stuff could be gone. If that's where you built your entire community, you're at a loss. Isn't there another place that you can back up those files? You can, and I'm, and I'm so glad you asked that because you have to start with that in mind. And it's bigger than just where my audio files are going, it's where are my customers going. And if, if we're playing in spots like Facebook, or SoundCloud, or YouTube, or iTunes, it's those companies that really own that relationship and, and they facilitate it, and it puts you on the opposite side of the scale that you don't wanna be on. So I'm gonna circle back to that here in just a second too, all right? Um, Stitcher Radio, I've used this. I don't use this personally anymore. I don't put my stuff here. I tried so hard to find something good to say, and there wasn't a ton. Does anyone in here use Stitcher Radio? Okay, Do you, is there anything in it that you guys like? Uh, what, what stands out to you guys about Stitcher? I just have it all pre-programmed to play okay. in order. And like a radio station, it'll just start yeah. popping them off? Yeah. Okay. Just on Android, it would the best. And, and that's one of the things, that, yeah, absolutely. There, there's not many contenders in Android. Yeah. They're all paid. This is free, yeah, so. Android, that's actually something for me to think about then, because I use an iPhone and I don't use Android, so I'm not exposed to that as often. But if I have people you know, there potentially, that might be a spot for me. Um, there's no stats. They have a cool radio fill. So like we were saying, if we want our just our podcast to keep firing off, or if we want to skip one and have something loaded that we like and know, it kind of does that for you. Um, they do have some weird terms. They were just acquired. It'll be cool to see if that ends up helping them out any, because they were acquired by a company that really believes in strong audio and strong quality, and Stitcher does not. Um, so it'll be cool and interesting to see how that all unfolds. So I want to bring this picture back because this is the image in a lot of newbie quote unquote podcasters head of what a podcast should look like, but it's also in the head of a lot of the people that think they're at the top of the podcasting game. There's a lot of people in podcasting who want you to think that you need to be behind a $400 microphone and a 
amplifier and mixer and all of this setup. They because they feel entitled and special because they have those things, right? Because they look like they're hosting a radio show or doing all those things. But the reality is, a lot in a lot of instances, your phone, a USB mic, a voice recorder, it can pick up the same quality, but more importantly, it can pick up the same passion. And that that right there is what matters. So find the passion. This can come in time. If you make something that's truly passionate and from the heart, you're gonna have these companies and many more knocking at your door wanting to give you this stuff. Wanting to have your picture in front of it. Wanting for you to say that you use this, that you love this, that you like this, that this is what you need to do as well. But it doesn't have to be that hard. It can be very, very simple. And podcasting, whether you're a listener or you're a creator and a podcaster yourself, it's on your own terms. You make it when you want, you publish it when you want. You get to listen to it when you want. And that's powerful. Because in today's age, we don't even pick up a phone. We'd much rather text. We'd much rather keep it going. So it can be done on your own terms. Any questions for me on podcasting or how maybe I can help you out by any means in brainstorming what it is you're trying to create? Yeah, Jeremy, you can circle back about where to store content so we're not putting it on a spot where basically if it goes down, we're screwed because I don't really want to do that. Most definitely. And I thought I had a slide in here. I guess I don't. So at the end of the day, in the bigger picture, if you don't own the list of the people that you want to be in contact with, you can run into, run into some trouble. The tried and true way beyond podcasting and anything else is having a way to communicate with them, whether it's email and what's becoming more and more big online is text messaging. Because if, you know, you're in a, if you're in your car, it's easier to text, whether you do it or not, or think it's safe, it's just, it's just easier. Um, having a list of people you can print out, that you can download, that you can put on paper and take with you in case of fire, that's powerful because you can send those people a personal note and say, hey, my house burned down, God forbid, or my, or my business was hacked online. Here's where I can be found. I'm gonna be over on Twitter all day answering your questions for the inconvenience. Or what about the content itself? The content? Um, the videos or the audio. The videos, so you wanna have those downloaded to your own computer where you make them. For podcasts, there's a very popular host kind of like how GoDaddy does for websites. There's a couple other hosts out there. The one I use is called Libsyn. What is it called? Libsyn, L-I-B-S-Y-N, and it allows for you to publish your, your episode. So here's what I do. L-I-B as in Victor? Uh, L-I-B as in boy. Yep, S-Y-N, all one word. It stands for Liberated Syndication. Liberated Syndication. L-I-B-S-Y-N. And here's why. I'm building my SoundCloud community with Magic Hour. I'm building my YouTube community with the Montoya experiment, but if those ever go away, I'm screwed. So I take my content, and although I make it available in SoundCloud, I download it, I put it in its own feed with that service, and then I tell iTunes where my stuff is. So then now iTunes will look over at Libsyn and say, okay, what's new, what's there, what have you done, and I own that. I own that feed. It's like, it's like that's where your website is. Yep. Now, now I can't communicate with, with the listeners, and I don't know email addresses, I don't know even zip codes or things like that, but I have the ability to reconnect with those people through but my don't feed. don't you, aren't they linkable? I mean, if it's like a hosting place, isn't it linkable to, like you said, to your YouTube, to your... There are ways. I could put in like a note in the description, like, hey, find me on YouTube, or if you want the resources for this episode, here's a link to the blog post that accompanies it. It sends them over to my website, or it sends them over to an article I read. Here's the link for it. Here's a video I was talking about, or here's a video I shared. You can go and watch that now. I'm talking about all of your content. Say you're making it on YouTube and all these different places, mm -hmm. okay? And how do you pull them all together at your place, your hosting place? That, that would be your own website. Oh, what? Just, yep. it's a web, but you said it's it specializes so, in, in uh, Right. Libsyn is like the place where all your content lives. Right. But people are probably going to find you on iTunes. They're going right. to find you right. on YouTube. But then they can go to the So they simple. can, if they found you on iTunes, they're probably not even going to even know that you're over on Libsyn. Exactly. Okay. But you can still have in the content notes for every episode. My homepage is here at Libsyn. They find me on Twitter and Facebook and have all that there. That, that gets uploaded to iTunes, it gets uploaded to Okay, iTunes. but it's not a traditional website per se. Not at all. No, but it's a content place. Okay. Yep. It is the okay. place where your, your videos, audio, whatever, that actually reside. Okay. And it is one of the best ones. Absolutely. Okay, great. That's, that's like a good one. 
if I can be of any help in the brainstorming process for your show, I would love to be. Just tweet me at JV Montoya. Thank you guys so much. I'm pumped to be here. Thank you. Yes, man. Appreciate that. What's your name, brother? I'm Dan. Dan, Jeremy. It's so nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. You have next here? Yes, I do. All right, cool. You're all set up here. Yeah, this is great. Swap them out. <laughs> what was that? I swap them out here. <laughs> I got this last second to this morning. I bought it two yeah. days ago. <laughs> I was a. Uh, I emailed him. It's like, oh, what do you do? <laughs> I was leaving. Uh, I was taking my friends to the airport and. My brother, or my roommate, he does my videos. He has all of the, the tech doodads. We he was already in the car, all loaded. I was driving, like, dude, I need this. Can you grab it real quick? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. it, it, it's more like for everybody. You have to do anything to get it special on the screen? Um, I don't think so. It should just pop it's over. Actually, let's do it first. It's um, it's not taking it up just yet either. If the rain it would come up, let's try to see that. Oh, 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 arrangement came up. There. Do you want a mirror or do you want a mirror? Oh, mirror is fine. Yes. Thank you, sir. Just like that. Oh, these are so different. Yes. I'm so happy to see you. I have to come hug you. <laughs> well, how are you? I'm so glad you're here. Thank you for selecting me or whoever did the, whoever had the poor choice of judgment. That was me. Oh, well, thank you for your poor decision. The same one who said you have to be on the podcasting panel with us later, too. You know. <laughs> I mean, geez. My, my place. My place. <laughs> uh, I got a minute. Yeah, you're good. Well, have fun. I will. I will. Thank Hopefully you we'll be able to this is great. catch up a little later. Yeah, absolutely. But I'm not running around like crazy. Well, you know, you're kind of busy. It's, it's, it's a thing. Yeah. Running a tech conference here, kind of. My phone is a call from But almost every... Yes, there you go. Uh, okay. But almost every smartphone now has a voice recorder. Right. And get better apps, too. Yes, yeah, it really is the way to start. <laughs> But I move around. Yeah. I have a microphone for dragon speaking, which I really use. I have lots of different strategies. I have Skype. Skype is how I start. I actually would, before I even had my own podcast where I interviewed people, I would call my phone and record my Skype conversation, and that's what I put on my it was the very first. That works, man. <laughs> if it's stupid but works, then it's not stupid. Right. <laughs> Thank you. Do you know still stupid? Huh? Do you know still stupid? Yes, Juno is still stupid. Awesome. <laughs> About two people that I have to communicate with it. I'm like, I'm not sure I can be friends with Obi-Wan. Do you want to use a clicker or are you running it yourself? I'll just okay. walk back and forth. All right. Thank you, though. Appreciate that. Um, right here. Yeah. So, sorry. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah. Just right before you start, we want to talk. No, do this. Make sure the recording is set up for you. Yeah, I mean, sure. Oh, I need all this. <laughs>